We don't have assigned seats. No.
Praise the Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. Come on, let's give him a hand clap of praise. How many of you know what this Sunday is? Pentecost Sunday. Stand with us today. See, if you stand, you can move a little better. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Sin have no dominion over me. I am not under the law, but I am under grace. And his grace is sufficient to meet every need in my life. I am a winner and not a loser. How about that? Amen. That's what we need to tell us. We are winners, not losers. Amen. Praise Lord. This has nothing to do with Pentecost, but I'm here to tell you we are winners and not losers. And I want to tell you something. The enemy will come against us, but you need to be able to tell that devil, not today, devil. <laughs> you had your heyday yesterday, but not today. I'm a winner, not a loser. My faith is in, in Jesus Christ. I am going to walk by faith, not by sight. Sight tells me I'm in trouble, but faith says I'm alive and well and live in victoriousness. Amen. Amen. Let's believe God together. Let's pray. We want to welcome all of you today by Facebook and uh, encourage you to share uh, the video of, the, of our Facebook and encourage you to show, give a party, whatever you need to do. Uh, to help people to be able to see the service today. And also, we want to encourage you to make comments in the uh, comment section. If you want prayer, need prayer, whatever, or you want to be blessed uh, or bless us by telling what God's done for you. We just get super excited. We, we do go back and look at those and read them and then rejoice with you and pray for you, whatever the case is. But today we want to open up in prayer. I'm here to tell you that I believe that the Holy Spirit is here to move in our lives. If we'll let him. We can do this, or we can do this. Doing this is saying, okay, Holy Spirit, come on. Get, 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 let the, the, the anointing fall. So I encourage you to do this this morning. Let's pray and open up and ask God to move this morning. Father, we love you today. We exalt you and magnify you and glorify you in the house. I pray that the supernatural anointing of the Holy Ghost that blowed on the day of Pentecost in that upper room, I pray will flow through this service this morning, through the praise and worship, and through the worship of your people. Lord, I pray as we lift you up this morning, we give honor and glory to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. Amen. Join our praise and worship team as they lead us today. just for my sake, <laughs> but pray for his quick recovery. You know, they tell you when you go to learn how to be a pastor, that one of the things they tell you is you have to learn how when you preach, you have to tell people what you're going to tell them, and then you tell them what you're going to tell them, and then you tell them that you told them, and only that way can they understand it, and actually you know that they got it. I think sometimes we miss the point that we don't listen to the very words that's coming out of our mouth. that you're making in the Psalms. And no, I'm not trying to become a preacher here. But I just wanted to make sure I brought that out because I have in mind of getting them to move this morning. A little bit. Oh, shame is a prison as cruel as a grave. Shame is a robber. He's come to take my Oh, love is my redeemer, lifting me up from the ground. Love is the power where my freedom song is found. Let's sing that again. Shame is a prison. It's cruel as a grave. Shame is a robber, and he's come to take my name. me up from the ground. Love is the power where my freedom song is found. There ain't no grave. Gonna hold my body down.
amen, amen. That should get exciting to us, folks. How many of you ready to go home? I ain't talking about your house. <laughs> I'm ready to go home. I've had enough of this old world. <laughs> I believe he could come at any moment, at any time. He said, in the moment, in a twinkling of an eye, the dead in Christ are going to rise first, and then we that are remain, and I believe it'll be we, remain, will be caught up with him. Those that are of faith, those that are walking right, that are living right, will be caught up to be with him in the air forever. Hallelujah. What a time that's going to be, church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Think about it. There will be no more sorrow. There will be no more pain. There will be no more aggravation. There will be no more bills. There will be no more getting up in the morning, trying to get up in the morning without aches and pains. All that will be gone. The Bible says in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, we're going to be changed. This old body is going to be gone, and he's going to give us a new body. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! Amen. If you have a need, if you'll just raise your hand all over the sanctuary today, you by Facebook or wherever you may be today, just raise your hand. We're going to believe God together. We have many needs amongst our church. Our church family is in need, uh, physical needs, spiritual needs, financial needs, every kind of need. We just want to pray and believe God today to touch and move. And you watching by Facebook as well. Let's pray together. Father, we love you today. We thank you because, Lord, we know that you're an awesome God. Lord, you're ready, hallelujah, to move and to meet the needs of your people. I believe that with all of my heart. I believe that you're, you're, you're pruning your people into a place of an outpouring of your anointing. Lord, I believe that you're pruning your people into a place of bringing us to a worship, Lord, beyond measure. Lord, that we're going to see the glory of God begin to fall and the glory of God begin to minister and lives will be changed. People will be saved. People will be healed. People will be delivered. Hallelujah. Lives will be changed. And we thank you for that. And I pray, God, help us today to get ready, to get ready, get ready. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Amen. Thank you so much. You can be seated if you can today. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Just want to make an announcement here. Next week, next Sunday, I know it's Memorial Day weekend. I encourage everybody to be here. We will be having communion. And we will be having communion like we always did before. We're going with the real cups and the real grape juice. <laughs> Amen. I I'm looking forward to that. Hallelujah. I'm tired of, and I won't say that they're false, because I, I, I may have said that last week, and I didn't mean that. We, we used them, and we were glad to get through them. Amen. Pentecost. We probably have people sitting under the sound of my voice today that you may have never heard about Pentecost. You don't know what it is. Well, I hope by the end of this service, <laughs> you know a little bit about Pentecost. So we just encourage you today to hear what God's speaking to our hearts. I want to say this this morning in opening up today. I believe that God is getting his church ready. And I have said this before, and I want to reiterate this morning. I believe that the last days begin on the day of Pentecost when he poured out his spirit. Joel prophesied in the last days, saith God, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And he began to pour out his spirit on that, in that upper room that we're going to preach about today. And I believe he's getting the church ready. But I want to tell you something today. To, to be operating in the spirit. To receive. Cause I, and, and if you've been listening to my Wednesday night services, you know I've been sharing some of this. But I want to say tonight, this morning, 
that the Holy Spirit is a gift. It is one of nine gifts in 1 Corinthians. It's one of the nine gifts. And that is poured out on, we, we will find out in Acts chapter 2. We'll be reading from Acts chapter 2 if you want to go ahead and, and get your Bible ready. But I believe with all of my heart that those were beginning of the, in the, la, well, beginning of the last days. And with what we're seeing today, I'm here to tell you, the, the Lord's ready to pour His, pour His anointing out. But I think one of the problems is is the church is not ready for it. You say, what do you mean by that, Pastor? Can I tell you this? I can. I'm your pastor. I think there's fear that has gripped the church. When I'm talking about church, I'm talking about church universal, even our church. I think not only fear, but I think there is a spirit of madness. People are mad for what we have gone through the last 11, uh, 13 months, I'm sorry, in America. I think it has affected us in more ways than we even realize but I want to say to you today as your pastor and you that are listening to me, it's time that we wake up and say, okay, we've been through this. It's time for me to focus my attention on God. It's time for me to learn to believe in God like I have never believed in Him before. And begin to open up and let God begin to move in your life. And begin to put the things that has happened in these, these last months, over the last year and a little over a year, let it be put behind you. And let's press towards the mark for the high calling in Christ Jesus. And let's see the hand of God move in a supernatural way. In our individual lives. Because I'm here to tell you, it starts to the individual first. We can point our fingers, we can do whatever we want to, but what it really, the Bible teaches us, and Jesus came very much and, and, and to a, bring a personal relationship with you as an individual. And that personal relationship needs to be built on a solid foundation, and that solid foundation should be with Jesus Christ. That we learn how to put our faith and our trust in Him because the devil is going to come against us. And we got to know in where we have got our feet planted on a solid rock, Christ Jesus, that He cannot blow us down, He cannot knock us over, but that we're going to come out winners. As I shared in the beginning of the service today, I am an overcomer. I believe that with all of my heart. The devil cannot defeat me. I am a overcomer through the blood of Jesus Christ. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Sin has no dominion over me. I'm not under the law. And when I speak of me, I'm speaking of you as well. You're not under the law, but you're under grace. And your grace, his grace today, is sufficient to meet your every need this morning. The Bible tells us in the book of Acts, chapter 2. The message today, the day of Pentecost. Before I do that, I want to I back up just a minute. In Acts chapter 1, in verse 8, I didn't tell them this, but I'm going to do this right here real quick. In verse 8 says, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. The coming Holy Spirit 
Jesus had told his disciples to go and dwell in Jerusalem until they were endued with power from on high. They had been water baptized. He says, but I'm going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. <laughs> fire purifies. Fire heats up. <laughs> I want you to know today, he said he will give us power. We need the power of God to live in the age in which we're living in right now. We don't need to be half in and half out of the church. We need to be in our relationship with Jesus Christ, and we need to have, get, ask him for everything that he has for us and be willing to receive it. And he said, ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come on you. And he's telling them, he said, wait for me in Jerusalem until you are doomed with power from on high. The Bible tells us in Acts chapter 2, beginning in verse 1, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. And it, and it sat upon each of them, and there, was, and there were all filled with the Holy Ghost, being, beginning to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. This is what we believe is official, uh, official evidence of the Holy Spirit is speaking in tongues. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem and uh, dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under the under heaven. Now when this noise abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own, t own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these men, are not all these which speak Galileans? And now hear we every man in his own, lang in his own tongue, wherein... He was born. I want to skip down to verse 12 and 13. And they were all amazed and were doubt, and in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others mocking, saying, These men are filled with new wine. <laughs> Father, we ask for the anointing of the Holy Ghost to anoint these slips of clay as we deliver this message today. I pray that to the person that does not know about Pentecost, that hopefully today you will be able to reveal to them how real and powerful the day of Pentecost was. And it's not just for that day, but it is for today. For us Lord, because you said in your word, it's for those, not only for those today, but those that are afar off, and we are those people that are afar off from the time that it first happened. Now, I pray for your anointing to fill this house in Jesus' name, amen. There was a mixed emotions that took place that day. The Bible says that the disciples were in the upper room and they had been praying and believing, not just the disciples, but there were women also there. And Mary, the Bible tells us, was with them, Jesus' mother. And they were praying and they were seeking the face of God and they knew what they were told and they were being obedient 
And I want you to know something. There's something about being obedient to receiving, in receiving the infilling of the Holy Ghost. I believe it was a miracle within itself that they stayed in the upper room the, the time that it took for the Holy Spirit to get there because Jesus had told them to go. They met there and they began to pray and they were getting hungry for an outpouring of what God had for them. And I want you to know something today. If you've ever been hungry, you know how it feels that you got to have something to quench that hunger. And I would today that everyone under the sound of my voice this morning would grasp the hunger feeling today for an outpouring of the anointing of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking with other tongues as the Spirit of God gives the utterance. I want to tell you up front today, as I've shared on Wednesday night, that this is a gift from God. And I've already said that, but I also want to say this, that it's just only one gift but I want you to know today, I'm not belittling the gift. Matter of fact, I encourage everybody to have a part of the gift of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. You say, well, Pastor, I'm not real sure about that. Well, I'm just here to tell you, I want to encourage you to do something this morning. If you've never had the baptism of the Holy Ghost, first of all, you need to born to be a born-again believer, okay? Non-believers don't receive the Holy Ghost. Only believers receive the Holy Ghost. Okay? And if you're a believer, then you are a candidate for the gift of the power of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Just say, Lord, I am your child, and I want everything that you have for me. Say, so, well, preacher, I don't want to act like no, like I've seen some of these people, you know, back in the day, back in the early days of Pentecost, when we were first recognized, they thought we were crazy people. Because we spoke in tongues. Some of us were. But it didn't stop the Holy Spirit from manifesting itself through us. We were known as the holy rollers in society. We were known for the lower class, low income, low education, or lack of education. We were having to depend on something that we really didn't even know was real. And I'll say, that, I'll say all that to say this. I'm going to bring it up in just a minute. We were known for people that hung from the chandeliers. We were, we were poor, but we had chandeliers. Hallelujah. I don't know how that happened. I would we had some in here today. If you want to grab that fan and go with it, go ahead. But make sure you're in the spirit. Because <laughs> if you're not, you're going to be in trouble. And the lights is going to go out. Say, preacher, you're crazy. I know. It's okay. I believe in the power of God. I, this is something that, that, that does something for me. I was raised in the Southern Baptist Church, and I'm not against the Southern Baptist by no means. I love the Southern Baptist. But when I came out of, this, out of camp and got into an Assemblies of God church and I found out about the Holy Ghost, whew, I wanted it. I wanted it. See, because I was doing things that was crazy in my life, and I was doing things that was satisfying me, and I wanted something to touch me. And I want to tell you something. The Holy Ghost will touch you. <laughs> It'll make a difference inside of you. It'll make you do a dance when you don't feel like dancing. It'll make you do things that you don't think you would ever do that you do because you know that you're in the Spirit. I want you to understand this also in the beginning of this message because I don't want to thank you that this is just a bunch of crazy things going on. In the Listen, the Spirit is subject to the prophet. I want you to know the Spirit will not do anything to you that you will not allow happen. You are in control of that. Okay? According to Scripture. We believe in this Pentecostal church. We believe in the assemblies of God. We believe in raising our hands. We believe in worship. We believe in speaking in tongues. We believe in interpretations of tongues. What is that, Pastor? That's when a message in tongues is given. And the interpretation comes in English. That's an interpretation of tongues. So we believe in all of that. 
But on this day of Pentecost, a miracle took place. First, first of all, they were when in one mind, in one accord. They were all together. They were thinking alike. They were praying alike. They were seeking alike. They were not trying to do something on their own. They were in unison together. And I'm telling you, as the body of this church and the body of the church of this world today, we need to come in unison again where we can see the move of God. We can see the outpouring of the Holy Spirit fill our homes, fill our hearts and our lives today. It was confusion to some of them. So I've already read to you, they were confounded. <laughs> they were, I mean, there were men from all over under heaven, the Bible says. They were from different languages and, 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 and dialogues and, and, and all. And when they got there, and the Bible says in the day of Pentecost, when they fell, they were all out in the streets and they were, they were talking and doing business and doing whatever they were supposed to do. And then all of a sudden, here come down out of that upper room the disciples. <laughs> Hallelujah, because they had already been in the presence of God. I want to tell you something. When you've been truly in the presence of God, you will leave the house and you will affect people outside. I'm going to say that again because I don't think you heard me. When you have an anointing and the power of the Holy Ghost happen in your life, when you walk out the door, you will affect other people. They were confounded, the Bible says. <laughs> they were confused. They wasn't sure because when they came down, they began to, they were worshiping. And I mean, they were praising, I'm sure. They were giving glory and honor to God and they were speaking in tongues. They took what they had in the upper room and they came down into the streets with it. And they were worshiping and, and the people were, were just, they were amazed. As I'll get to that in a minute. But some of them were going, how can this be? These men are Galileans and they speak the language, language that we do and they're unlearned. Again, there we go about that unlearned stuff. So I want to tell you, there may be people that look at you when you're, when you're spirit-filled, and they may think about, you know, they may be a little bit confused or confounded because how does that person know how to say that? I want you to understand this today. It is not the person. If it ever becomes a person, it's not the Holy Ghost. It better be the Holy Ghost. And it was the Holy Ghost that was on them. I've been in, in church services where the Spirit of God began to move and messages in tongues came forward. And there wasn't an interpretation of tongues, but there was somebody sitting in that service. And some of you that's been in Pentecost, you know what I'm talking about. They were sitting in that service. Something was going on with them. Nobody else knew about it, but the Holy Ghost did. And the Holy Ghost began to speak to an individual, began to speak in tongues. And that message came directly to that person. And they understood every single word that was being said, and it was directly to them. That's what the Holy Spirit does. They were confounded. And there's going to be people who say, man, I, I can't believe that you go to a Pentecostal church. Them folks, them folks are crazy. <laughs> they speak in tongues. You just need to tell them that they speak in tongues. They just speak with a forked one. <laughs> did I say that out loud? I did. Let me tell you something. You can't speak in the Holy Ghost one day and speak the devil the other day. Because the Holy Ghost that you thought you spoke the day before wasn't Holy Ghost. It was flesh. <laughs> I've had people on Facebook, seen people on Facebook talk about the Holy Ghost and then right up under it say things about folk and use words that I wouldn't dare say. I want to tell you something. God ain't in that. You need to get saved. And then you need to get filled with the Holy Ghost. That's what's confounding some of them. It's because they see folks that profess Christianity and the, the, the Holy Ghost and they watch your life and they some, see something different. Let's, listen, quit playing church. Quit being in the flesh and get a genuine, authentic move of the Holy Ghost in your life and see a change take place. 
Some of them were amazed and marveled. They watched him. They seen men. Wow, this is this because it's a different diversity uh, of crowd. I didn't say that right, I know. But different types of people and different, from different languages. And they were looking and they were amazed that something, this, they had, had to be God. They were thinking, this has to be God. It has to be something supernatural. It's amazing to what we're hearing here today. And today you're sitting under the sound of my voice and you're watching me my, by, by Facebook today or YouTube as the service comes to a close. But I want you to know today that when you see somebody and they're in the Spirit of God and they begin to speak in tongues, there's a glorious move of the Spirit that will fill the house. And I want to say this today as a pastor. When you see something like that happen, don't get up and walk out. Don't, get, don't start talking to your neighbor. Sit there and in reverence to the move of the Holy Ghost in the house. You may not understand it. You may not even agree with it. But at least be respectful to watch the awesomeness of the move of the Holy Spirit. And I want to say this today. The Spirit should move in every service. It's not just the day of Pentecost that we celebrate today. Then there were those who doubted. (laughs) Mm. That's not God. I want to tell you something. Be careful. Be careful. Because there's always doubters in the crowd. And I'm not trying to be ugly today, but sitting under the sound of my voice today, there's probably some of you, mm, I don't believe this. Okay. Well, it's a gift for you. And I'm telling you today, if you're a born-again believer, you can have it. You don't have to doubt it. Experience it. Accept it. Experience it. As I said, Lord, if, you, if it's you and you have it for me, I want it. Can I say this to us that are spirit-filled people? There are a lot of times we have our doubts. When the Spirit of God begins to move, you ever had the Spirit of God to move on you to do something? You go, hmm, I don't know if that's God or not. (laughs) The Holy Spirit moves. Let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit is so real. He knows us. And the Bible says that when we're speaking in tongues, the, the, the devil don't know what we're saying. And he said the Spirit... He knows the heart and the mind of God, and he knows how to pray. That's the reason we pray in the Spirit. It's because, that the, and speaking in tongues, it's because the devil don't know. He won't know what we're talking about. And when we let the Holy Spirit take over, the Holy Spirit will start telling the Lord through the, through the Spirit things that are in our heart to help get out of our heart or to touch our heart or to minister to us, whatever our needs may be. Don't doubt it. Embrace it. The next one was that they mocked it. I'm telling you, you may not believe in it. You may not be filled with it. But don't ever mock it. Don't ever mock it. You know what they said when they begin to mock them? They said, these guys, I know what's going on. They've been drinking the wine. They had wine up in that upper room. They've been drinking new wine. And they are drunk. I want to tell you something. I've seen people that has been filled with the Holy Ghost that has not, uh, that have already been filled with the Holy Ghost that have been worshiping these services in our church. I've seen them fall out in the spirit. I've seen them get up where they couldn't hardly walk. I've had, I've seen people. I've been over in the Browns, Brownsville revival when I've seen people had to be carried out to their cars because they were in such a, a power of an anointing of God. I've seen it happen right here in this church. We had to pick them up and, and set them in a chair. The power of God so strong on them, they fall out in the spirit. We call that being slain in the spirit for you that may not know what that is. There's nothing wrong with it. And while they're there down there and the, laid out in the spirit, though the Holy Spirit is generally talking to them and ministering to them, strengthening them and lifting them up. 
is what he's doing. There's a purpose for it. So if you see in our church, if you see somebody that's, that gets slain in the spirit, <laughs> don't think we're crazy. Just know God's doing something supernatural. The awesome move of the Holy Spirit comes over them and overpowers them to the point that they can't stand any longer and they fall out. You say, well, pastor, does people do it? Does people fall out in the flesh? Yes, they do. What do you mean by that? I'm going to tell you. Be in the service and people be falling out, boom, 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 boom. Get over to somebody over here, and they don't feel that move for whatever reason. But by Georgie, they're not going to be, <laughs> they're going to be showed out. <laughs> so they just fall out too. You better hope somebody's there to catch you. Because if you're in the spirit, when you fall, it don't matter. But if you're in the flesh, the floor's hard. <laughs> I don't want to scare anybody from falling out of the Spirit, okay? If the Spirit moves on you, you just let the Spirit of God move. But they were mocking. I don't know. Maybe some of them were being slain in the Spirit when they were coming down. I don't know what all may have would taken place that day, but they were making fun of them. Maybe they were stumbling a little bit because the Spirit of God was on them. I don't know. Maybe they looked like they were drunk, but they were making fun of them. And those people make fun of you. I want to tell you something. If something inside of you is going on is right, you don't need to be worried about what other people's thinking about it. They can tell you that you're crazy, that you that you drunk, whatever else. I'm telling you, if I get drunk, I want to be drunk on the new wine. It's not fermented. Amen, Pastor. <laughs> My last point today. As Peter explained to them what was going on. In Acts chapter 2 verse 14. But Peter standing up with the eleven lifted up his voice. And said unto them. Ye men of Judah. And ye, and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken unto my voice, unto my words. For there, for these are not drunk as ye suppose, seeing it but the third hour of the day. But these, but this is that which the which was spoken by the prophet Joel in the last, I'm sorry, it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And you, your old men <laughs> shall dream dreams. Lord, send me a dream. <laughs> this is what it's talking about. He wants the younger generation to not only be saved, but be aware of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. To be accepted of the Holy Spirit that it can use you, that it can show you things, that you can use, speak words of wisdom, words of prophecy to the people. He wants you today as the body of Christ, and I'm not sure what is young because some of those were 900 years old as well back in the day. So you may not be counted out yet sitting under, my, under the sound of my voice, <laughs> or me either by that way. But he says to them, they're not drunk, as you suppose. You're making fun of them, but I want you to know something today. These guys are not drunk. And Peter, remember Peter, he was the one that denied the Lord. But in the upper room, he had a great experience. He had already repented, and he had been in the upper room for a little while, and the Spirit of God fell. And I'm here to tell you that you may have messed up in your life somewhere down the road, but I'm here to tell you if you'll repent of your sins and turn your ways around, the Lord can use you again. 
And he did with Peter. Peter didn't have a problem standing up and saying, these guys are not drunk, as you suppose you're making fun of them. But I'm here to tell you today that it's the power of the Holy Ghost that it was prophesied by Joel would come in these last days. He has poured his anointed out. The Holy Ghost has filled these men and will fill you today if you'll let him. Hallelujah. He not only stopped there, Peter, boy, I like what Peter did. He went on down. He said, the same Jesus that you hung on a cross, hallelujah, he and, and put in a tomb on the third day, he came back. And I'm here to tell you, he told us that we were going to be in Jerusalem until we were in doom with power from on high. I'm here to tell you, the Holy Ghost has come into the house this morning, and he's here to anoint, and he's here to feel, and he's here to lift up today. And that's what he did. He said, you have crucified him. You knew he was a good man. You've seen the miracles that he took place in his life. You knew he was, he was seen doing these things. But you didn't like them because you wasn't getting any glory. I'm here to tell you there are folks out there today, if they don't get a little glory themselves, God ain't moving. I don't need no glory. I just need the presence of God to fill the house. I just need the presence of God to fill this house today. Peter, he didn't cut no bones about it. He said, this is a day. You know what happened? The Bible says that 3,000 people were saved that day. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. It didn't stop there. The Bible said it was added to the church daily. I couldn't imagine what it must have felt like to preach to that many people. 3,000 of them got saved. I could not imagine. I know we can't get 3,000 in this building, but if just the people that's in this building were, were lost, all of you were lost today, and you all came to the altar, I'm telling you, this preacher would have a Holy Ghost fit today. I'd go to running with my good and my bad knee. It's not made for Pentecost, but it would become Pentecostal. Put a little shake to it. We're going with it. I'm here to tell you, when they preached the power of God fell, people were convicted. I'm here to tell you today, the world, this United States today and around the world, needs to come back to a place that we sense a convicting power of the anointing of the Holy Ghost again, and that we turn from our wicked ways, and we turn to God, and we begin to receive what God has for us, and that is first salvation, and then the gift of the Holy Ghost. This is for you today, every one of you, even those that are watching today by Facebook and YouTube. I'm not leaving you out this morning. Hear me today. It's for you today. I'm not sure about all that excitement, preacher. Let me ask you something. When your son and daughter were playing sports and they scored a run, did you sit there and go, well, bless God, I don't believe in getting excited. No, you did not. You may not act as crazy as some folk do. Because <laughs> they some out there really get crazy. I wish we would get crazy in here a time or two. What do you mean by that, Pastor? I'd like to see us do a Jericho march. I'd like to see some hands raised and some feet tapping and, and, some, and some shouting going on in the church. Say, so we don't do that anymore. That's a shame. That's a shame. We need to have the power of God. See, because see, the Holy Spirit hadn't changed. It's still powerful. It's just like the blood of Jesus. It hadn't lost its power. It still cleanses, and the Holy Ghost still feels, Woo! Hallelujah. I feel the anointing of God in this place. I don't want to ever get to the place that I don't want to feel God's anointing. I want to have the power of God operating, moving, and ministering. Stand with me all over the sanctuary today. I may not have done all of it justice today because there's so much to be said about Pentecost. I want you to understand that. I want you to know that. The Bible tells us that we receive power to go out and tell people about Jesus. Where is the power at? Where is the witnesses at? Where, why are we not telling people about Jesus? Why are we not telling them about the Holy Ghost? 
something is dead wrong in the church. And I'm not trying to be ugly, but I'm here to tell you, it's time. I want to tell you something. If you want to go in the rapture, you better get rapture ready. And the only way to do that is give your life to Jesus. Say, Pastor, do you have to have the Holy Ghost to go to heaven? No, I want to tell you that right up front. Again, it's a gift. It's like salvation. Salvation is a gift. You either accept it or reject it. And my prayer today is a word speaks to us today from the word. He says, I set before you death and life. Choose life. So this morning, all of you under the sound of my voice and while they're just going to start playing, I want you to hear me this morning. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, maybe you've been in church, maybe you even come to an altar, maybe you've done some things, but you know that you have gotten away from God, this is your day. He brought you into this house to hear this message, not because of who the preacher is, because who the message is what the message is and that's the message of salvation not only the message of salvation but the, the message of the Holy Ghost in this house today so this morning I want to encourage you all over this sanctuary you that are watching by Facebook YouTube hear me this morning hear me this morning this is your day our days are coming to a close he says to call us home He's just the rapture of the church. Are you ready? Are you ready? If Jesus were to call time on your life right now, or if the rapture of the church was to take place, would you leave this building by the way of the rapture? Right now, if the rapture were to take place. This is something serious. Nobody else can answer that for you but yourself. And if, you're ha if your answer is no, then I'm telling you today that you have a... A, a Lord and a Savior today with stretched out arms saying, come. I will redeem you. I will wash you. I will cleanse you. I will set you free. It doesn't matter of the sin. It doesn't matter of what's happened in your life. I will forgive you and I will set you free if you'll let me. All you got to do is step out from where you at and come. Will you step out today? Will you, on Facebook, will you write in in the section, in, in the comment section, I want to give my life to Jesus? Will you do that? All over this sanctuary this morning, I'm going to open these altars for you. If you need Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I'm going to ask you to come and give your life to Christ. Young and older alike, will you step out from where you at and come to an altar of repentance? Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Come on, all over the sanctuary. You're not ready to meet the Lord. You know that there are things in your life that will create a hindrance between you and heaven. You don't need to let that happen. You need to get rid of it right now. And the blood of Jesus Christ is right here. And He will wash you. He will cleanse you today. Hallelujah. I just know that the Spirit of God is speaking this morning to some hearts. You need to step out. Young person, older person alike. You need to step out from where you're at. And come to an altar of repentance today. Let the Lord take and cleanse you and wash you. And set you free today. Hallelujah. Right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost right now. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, right now. You know you need to give your life to Jesus. This is your opportunity. Right now, He's calling out to you. Will you respond this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right now. One more call. You need Jesus. Don't walk out of this building like you came in.